All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris Mayer, and you're tuned in to the Bitch Show, the Boston Indies talk show and happy hour, of course, presented by Boston Indies, Boston's home for independent games. Uh, we got a great show for you tonight. It's Bitch Show, season four, episode two. We're halfway through this little abbreviated season here. Before we kick things off, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, first up, Boston Festival of Indie Games is running their BFIG Talks and BFIG Learns event at the end of next month. They are still accepting talks. If you want to give a talk, uh, I'll put the link in the chat. But you think you have like two days to submit talks. So if that's something you want to do, get on that. Uh, and you can also buy tickets to the event proper, but you can also do it later. So uh, no worries. Uh, Pioneer Valley Game Developers are running an event on May 2nd, which I believe is this Sunday. That's about uh, social media uh, engagement and you know how to improve your social media you know stuff around your game. So you can check that out. There's a link in the chat. And uh, you know I haven't really talked about main video game developers, but there's also main video game developers, uh, a group up obviously in Maine. Uh, they're running a visual scripting jam next 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 week. Uh, I don't know, we've got some people here who are in, you know, Vermont, so I figured, you know, throw that one out there. Maybe there's some people tuning in from just uh, up north a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Let's start the show. Let's go! Oh, show time. All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bit Show, the Boston Indies talk show and happy hour, the only place on the internet where you can hear a local game gremlin and an industry legend say words to cool people about cool things happening in Boston game development. I am one half of this dynamic duo, channeling the spirit of the gun, but not forgotten Ichiro Lamb. He is not dead. He is just here. Uh, my name is Kate Olguin, and with me is the incomparable... Zyber Scott. Whoa. <laughs> I was I was mesmerized by your professional introduction, the likes of which the show has never seen. Bravo. <laughs> In a past life, I was a carnival barker. <laughs> I can never get past the part where it's like, wait, are are we on? Do Huge do mood. we go now? Uh, so I'm excited <laughs> about this. One day we'll figure it out. Someday. <laughs> <sighs> but it is very nice to be here. It's a lovely evening here in where I am, which is definitely Boston and not Connecticut. Um, and uh, it is it is rainy, and that's my important discourse of the week. Since we've exhausted, uh, I've 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 exhausted all other topics to the stakes of toxic food discourse. Oh, let's talk about the weather then. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm supposed to I'm supposed to film something in my backyard tomorrow. Uh, and the only thing that could go wrong is if there's wind. And when is there wind? And I just looked up the report. It says there may be gale force winds tomorrow. There's some sort of <laughs> nautical warning going on in the area. So um, enjoy. Uh, everything's getting blown down tomorrow. This is, this is my public service announcement. I don't know where we've gone. I'm just lying about the weather now. That's what the show is. See, you said nautical warning. And like it took my brain like a couple of seconds to be like nautical as in like of or as or pertaining to the sea but my brain was like nautical is that like some new form of like radical like <laughs> <laughs> i think we should make that that it's like that's pretty nautical man i feel like there's something to that it's like some really annoying dad joke where every time he picks up a fish michael carrier will say totally nautical dude <laughs> yes i called out michael carrier for that that is what he <laughs> I think, love you, I think... Michael, if you're out there, but you aren't. So, nautical, dude. Nautical, dude. <laughs> I think that should be, well, because, you know, like, if, when when uh, when a lot of people are, are on the internet, and especially when they're on dating profiles, they share pictures of themselves doing stuff. And uh, especially popular is to hold yourself with a fish, I guess. What? Like, uh, yeah. It's, For scale, it... so you can tell how big you are or how big the fish <laughs> yeah. is? I I don't know. It's like a really popular thing on like on dating apps. I'm I I say never having been on a dating app, but it's a like really popular thing is to like <laughs> for guys to hold up like fish because I I guess fish are really cool. Is it symbolic? Does it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like the the hat with like the 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 uh, woman want me fish fear me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we the peaked. <laughs> Besides our uh, explorations of life here, uh, Boston has been up to a few things themselves. Um, so let's let's cut over. That's my brilliant segue, if you couldn't tell. 
uh, to the big great. showboating, which has a boat in it. This section is totally nautical. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Since we actually did have a show one week ago, it's a little, a little uh, lighter this time, so we don't have to proceed through at a panic pace. We can enjoy uh, the, the can glorious work creations, remote. just like you would savor a fine fish <laughs> if you like fish. <laughs> I'm still like, so the fish is social proof that this is a good man somehow. Like this fish will hang out with me. Fish, you should too. Fishing is manly. Only men's men go into the water for hours on end and wait <laughs> well you know where there are fish in the deep rivers formed by jesse crafts finch's terrain that they're generating it's true i've been using the standalone app gaia gia however you pronounce it uh i always love to see people messing around with terrains it's fun to see like a whole little world down there yeah it, you know uh unity's got been on such a weird sort of disappointing place with train for so long that it is uh, you do have to go to these apps for exploration. So Luigi and I spent a while playing with apps, and, and uh, um, this is nice. Really makes me want to go for like a nice swim or a hike. Yeah, it's also this real sense of when you're playing with this stuff. It's like a sense of very literal sense, biblical sense of creation, right? Like I am yeah. the earth. I created this mountain. Yeah. So keep keep sharing your adventures there, Jesse. That's fun. Uh, I believe Jesse created this mountain, actually. <laughs> all right do we have uh next up yeah yeah it's uh it's ichiro doing ah things uh which it looks like uh yeah he made it so that you can do a flip and it's better now uh he was he was tweeting about it there's a thread um apparently i guess he has built it back i uh, built it they built this from scratch again i mean i guess he built it from scratch the first time um yeah so this i guess was will stall will stall was a, he's a philly developer and a lot of a visual artist um and he's a he's a wacky intense dude i like to hang out with every now and then um but his suggestion was rip apart the two systems you know mm. if you're having trouble sorting sorting movement and um control or scoring movement and scoring do the work to separate them, which is one of those things as a game dev, I just hate to hear late in a project. Like, hey, why don't you like dissect things and take more time <laughs> to put them apart? It's like, no, I just want to tweak three numbers and have it be done and perfect. Yeah. This was Achiro doing the work here to get things right. I really feel that, especially as someone who like doesn't program especially well. And so like all of my games are held that, that I program are held together by like spit in a prayer. So they're like, <laughs> would you like to sell, separate these two things? And I'm like, I don't know. Would, would you like my game to work at the end of this? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Rad. James. Oh, look, someone else is making a game. Crazy. Tyler Haddad. Haddad? I'm sorry. I'm going to... Uh... I, I, Haddad, Haddad, I I know this guy and I don't even. I, I'm, apologies, we'll, apologies, we'll Tyler. Um, this is a flower defense. Oh, you know, I read that earlier and it just sort of went over me. Mm -hmm. Like I, the the play on words, I appreciate it. It's cute. Totally nautical. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're playing as a gardener. There's hordes of shrooms. Uh, you got a pesticide gun. It's very in theme. I like that when you wrap. Uh, I mean. It's it's not just cute, it it helps you read the context of things and sort of understand how stuff would fit in without having to go through much bigger tutorials because you're like oh, it's a world of plants, pesticides. That's gonna be power. So like I appreciate that. Yeah, I yeah. And it looks like the Steam page is live, so everyone go wishlist it uh, immediately right now. Um, I believe that Tyler has only in the past year or so forayed into doing solo development. Uh, so I'm very excited to see the stuff that he's working on. Uh, I love these little mushroom fellas. They're just hanging out. Like, speaking of things you can't eat, I mean, I guess you can't eat mushrooms, but you probably can't eat these. Next up, it's Benny Wilson, who is working on an FPS called Oxide, set in near future Boston, which I hope it's not too near in the future, uh, although it would at least be an, an interesting change of pace. Um, I don't know if we're getting audio, uh, Chris, I can't tell. Are they getting audio from this clip? And he's, he's doing, I don't know if it's Benny yourself, there's some juicy voice lines there. Mm. Some, some talking, talking sassy shit to the thing, the purple thing he's shooting. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate that. 
Yeah, I, I love the VFX here as well. Uh, it looks neat, and I am all, I am excited for the day where I too can shoot a glowing orb in what appears to me to be a T stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but Benny doesn't stop. Benny's got another slide here. That's uh, true. Um, this one is one of those bold everything descriptions. Um, uh, f flipping birds, which seems to be its own contextual thing. Uh, it's educational. It's about Black history. It's about geography and game modding. Um, this uh, and it's a uh, procedural uh, road here. Um, this is a this is everything. Um, I'm I'm thrilled by the ambitious thesis statement that that this is brought with. And I'm not being facetious. I, I've yeah, been, not. <laughs> pulled a lot of it off. Um, and even if you just pull a couple of those items off together, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to being uh, educated while also doing some nice Sunday driving in a sky blue car. <laughs> All right, what's next? It's Soul with Dross. Uh, so Soul's been adding some animations. Uh, you can see there's a little bug walking around. We actually had, I believe, uh, one of Soul's little bugs last week. Uh, and I cannot tell you how exciting it is to have had the buildup of seeing all of the cool bugs that Soul has been posting yeah. in the devlog channel, and then finally getting to see a little bug walk around. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first time I think I'm seeing, maybe I missed some other posts uh, of this perspective, this depth perspective with the walls like that. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I was like positive this game was 2D, but That's here we rad. are. Yeah, I, I have no idea, honestly. The, seeing the, seeing this it may, has made me realize how little I knew about the lore behind the bugs and how much more I want to know about this yeah. deep bug lore. Awesome. Uh, um, yeah, so it's gonna get real weird and good from here on out. So I'm I am very much looking forward to seeing how much weirder and gooder. <laughs> Speaking of weirder and gooder, Mark Mayer has been working on Deathless for uh, since 1973, um, uh, uh, Mark, uh, I think you're, you're off in Seattle now. I don't know if you're watching the show, uh, formerly in, in the Boston area, um, is a bit of a, 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 a shader math madman who's been doing this wonderful um, geometry, uh, uh, intersection of geometry and art here, um, and uh, apparently had a, a good, good solid hit on Reddit uh, the other day with this one. So hats off to you, Mark. It's always beautiful to see this evolve um yeah. i think you, you was also mentioning you updated his uh steam page for it the other day so check that out it is super rad looking oh it's shane coming at us with a let him dare 48 submission uh yeah so this is darkness muse a light bullet hell where your health determines how far you can see and you dive deeper and deeper into the dark cave in search of your muse um so yeah uh game gems are super great uh although i 100 percent get what shane is saying when they say they are super excited but also very tired because that really is the post game jam mood <laughs> um, i played this earlier today I, I thoroughly enjoyed my my few minutes with it i recommend it right in browser go check it out wow, i really wish i had picked a clip that wasn't two seconds long <laughs> <laughs> it happens cool um, and last, Matt, uh, Matt Brailsford has been iterating on Betty and Earl level design, um, uh, iterating, uh, gorgeously on top of gorgeous. Uh, I think they're, I really love, uh, Matt's uses of color and, and shape here, um, and, and print, uh, cropped print and stuff. So, uh, really cool to see that evolve. Matt's been sharing this project with us for a while, so we've gotten to see it get to this, this heightened state, um, and... Yeah, he's asking for um, uh, uh, feedback and making it better, but... Uh, hey, if you want I to couldn't... give him feedback, go follow him at Giant Light on Twitter. Wow. <laughs> awesome. All right, that is our uh, luxurious stroll through Bit Showboating. Uh, as always, you're all wonderful. It's so great to see you being creative and productive. Yay. Yeah. But we have to move on. <laughs> so... We've got a guest today. Isn't that exciting? Surprise, surprise, we have a guest on the show. I bet no one... What? Wait, that's crazy. <laughs> Hold on. I had to take notes. <laughs> right. Well, well, Kate, if you were unprepared, let me give you a little introduction. When today's guest isn't reviewing vacuums for USA Today or driving a truck for children's fairs, when they're not auctioning off Ed Sheeran's logo, Lego, 
or filming themselves being tortured in a basement by Wario, they are making indie games. Yes, friends, today we have a delightful opportunity to peek in on the multitudinous world of James Johnston. Oh, hey everybody. We're going to cover everything except games with me, which is fine. We got plenty to talk about. Um, but hi everybody. Thanks for having me on the big show. I'm, I'm oh, James. Thank huh. you for being here. This is my very rude excited ghost. to have you. That's Ooh, a very good right. little That's ghost. That's enough, ghost. Ghost. It's enough of the ghost. <laughs> uh, hey, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm, uh, well, I'm doing okay. I just finished the new, um, uh, Near Replicant, which is the remake of, uh, Near, the, the, um, Square Enix's, uh, what if ocarina of time but depressing so uh, i'm feeling happy to be here with you guys but i'm also facing uh, uh existential dread um after finishing a very depressing game like that so. thank you for pulling yourself away from beating yourself <laughs> up emotionally with your the entertainment you've chosen for the day and speaking of entertainment you've chosen for the day game development that's crazy uh so you started out at Emerson for marketing and then you started hanging around at northeastern so how did that happen how'd you get into it how did that happen yeah uh, yeah I, so so uh, originally i was part of an, uh, an entrepreneurial class at, at emerson an entrepreneurial minor which i which i did complete um but uh, it was for a completely different business um more of a, uh, I guess, what you would like a fan gamer or, or a Sanchi kind of business. Um, but what I realized was um, what I really wanted to do is not be around games, but I wanted to be in games, right? I, I, I thought I, I am someone who would like to make games that then um, other people would be like, I really love your game. Um, so let me be inspired by that. You know what I mean? So, um, so I ended up running into these two developers from uh northeastern and we 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 formed up a a kind of i guess little indie collective basically called uh, glass knuckle games Ooh, all right just a couple a couple games we did some local cons we did some uh east coast cons and um got a little bit of attention here and there but then um after after i worked because i was doing marketing like i said um you know studying marketing and then doing marketing for them helping pro games get to cons hang around packs um, hang around PAX, and then one year we did actually get into PAX, so we did make it in that early <laughs> on. Uh, and then afterwards, um, we kind of split uh, our separate ways. One, one of the artists went off to like work for Jackbox, which was great for him, and uh, and then um, some of us banded together to create Rude Ghost. And Rude Ghost has spent uh, uh, well until we released end of last year. We spent the last three and a half years working on a Pixel Puzzle Makeout League. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so to step back, so you started, you, 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 one of your first moves going into games was festivals. You were like, uh, now that I'm in this game sphere, the thing to do is, uh, festivals, PAX, uh, um, what other, what other places were you going? Yeah. I mean, PAX, right. Is, is PAX was still pretty new when, when, when I hit college, PAX only been around for like two years at that point. Um, Boston Fig started while I was at college, right? I mean, we, we were in, I think for like the third year of Boston Fig because it was so new. And then um, MAGFest, uh, MAGFest, which which I understand currently is facing some uh, yeah. is a tumultuous history, is facing some organizational changes right now, I think for the better, but uh, MAGFest was always a great, MAGFest, um, as far as I can tell, um, for, for bigger conventions is the only really big convention now that will still give absolutely free space to huh. in, um and and the people who ran that separate from any sort of issues with the organization started their own thing called the indie maker syndicate so we did a virtual thing with them um and then uh momocon uh, uh does free space for 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 indie most indies in georgia like an anime con with gaming stuff huh. and um Toronto. so why what, what what are you getting out of these shows you go to yeah, uh, I love uh, talking to people, <laughs> meeting people. I'm very much uh, no. extroverted That's in crazy. that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just love, yeah, being in front of people, getting to talk to people who are here to, well, I, they come up to your booth and what do they want to talk about? They want to talk about you and your game or it other is, games. So it like, is this addictive. Reminds me of this. Yeah, so so it's it's always a lot of fun. Um, in fact, the last thing, um, Zyba, you, you know, you and I did was a, a, a panel yeah. at PAX and, and doing that and, not only working on my own game, but also working with um, Skymap Games, my my publisher, um, 
being able to work with their games too and have a whole booth is is just it's energizing for me it's it's so fun and, and everybody's so nice and you know i mean who goes to a convention and is like all right i'm gonna have a bad time right <laughs> nobody so it's like you're already ready to have a good time and uh what's great too from a development standpoint is you just have play testing data from people who know nothing about you and 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 are uh, may not even play they might just see you and you're like they're like i am bored i have like 20 minutes till a panel i have to get in line for i would never play your game otherwise and that's where you get the valuable feedback right <laughs> so, so do you think those people because one of the things i always thought of showing at festivals is these are people at their happiest most relaxed time and they're never going to really be mean like they would in private on a steam forum you, you think you're still getting the criticism you need out of some of these demos? The gameplay doesn't lie. It's the thing. You look over their shoulder. How can they be nice if they don't get it, right? And even if they don't get it, you're going to be like, they're going to be like, oh, uh, you know, okay, I, I had fun. Let's go. But you can tell is like, oh, they were just like walking into a wall for like five minutes, right? You, you can tell if you're looking over their shoulder and kind of keeping an eye there. Mm -hmm. I think seeing people just pick it up I think it plays to that pick up and play attitude that I think most games, you know, it's, uh, I, I was just reading this book called uh, Ask Iwata. It was the uh, the kind of memoirs of uh, Satoru Iwata who, uh, who, you know, passed away a few years ago. Yeah. And um, Iwata had mentioned is like uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, his secret talent was like at Nintendo being like, hey, dude in accounting, you get a 20 minute break, you're coming with me and just throws them into a, any game they're working on and be like, huh. oh, immediately they don't get this, they don't get that. And just having a few minutes just to say, if some person, if like your mom who doesn't play games or like your uncle who doesn't play games picks this up, immediately you just see what's wrong. So I think that is is super valuable for those, um, you know, crazy addicting games, right? Hades, stuff like that. It doesn't work for every game, um, yeah. but but some of those games, it's, it's just immediate. You can immediately tell like, um, if someone's not having a great time with your game at a con, like they should pick it up and be having a great time. And if they're not immediately, you know, like I have, I have worked on builds while at a con oh, to yeah. update for, like <laughs> oh, yeah. later in that day. Right. So um, I don't think I haven't altered. I don't think I've ever had a build that survived through a three day festival unchanged. I yeah. released my first game on steam while sitting in a PAX hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I, you know, hear, hearing you talk, I hear a lot of uh, a, a through line of, of a lot of meeting people and like talking to people. And at one point when we've been talking, uh, you called itch.io's game jam section Tinder for game developers. So what exactly is your experience with uh, game jams? Hey, speaking of Tinder real quick, I hate to derail, but I want to come <laughs> back to the fish thing. Because that's like a that's like a thing, right? Is yeah, it's like guys are supposed to show like I'm sporty, I'm talented, I caught a big fish. However, I will admit um, you know, this is not a this is not a pitch to any single people in the chat, but um, you know, I have started using dating apps. But the crazy thing is, um, <laughs> I've seen women now. Women have fish now, and it's like, okay, so now <laughs> guys have the fish, uh, girls have the fish now. I don't have the. F everyone Swear. seems to have the fish, and now I think it's required. You have to. There's like a one app. It's like you have to have a fish pick. <laughs> Um, I'm losing my mind because I have a tie that looks literally like a giant fish. Just, just hold. And that I can't up. find it for the life of me. <laughs> if you were gonna be in a dating app, hold up the fish tie. If I saw it's that, somewhere I'd be like, in here. Hey, at least check. Fish is visible. Great. This pinnacle um, can go squid or possum or something. Is is it possum? <laughs> possum. Yeah, uh, hold up your big possum. Yeah, if you want to attract someone who's like quirky, right? You're like, oh, I've got a possum. But how would you hold it? Like, you would have to hold it humanely, right? I would assume. Oh man, wow. oh, that's an amazing, <laughs> that, that looks like a real fish. There it I, is. I dissociated for a second. It all paid off. Um, People are any... swiping on their Twitches. <laughs> um, Ladies. <laughs> but, but but anyways, yeah, um, uh, I, I was jokingly, you know, comparing um, game jams to kind of like, I guess, game dev dating, but um, I, I'm a big fan of meeting random people, new people, through game jams actually what's so funny you were showing footage from um dross and and saul and i actually were part of the same game jam where i started pml and we didn't really even we were both in it and then we never talked until like two years later i was like you were in that same thing and now we released our game um so so it's really interesting to just kind of meet up with a bunch of people regardless of skill level or or talents i i did not study 
programming in the, in the, in the, in the slightest. A and I ended up uh, doing my first game jam was a um, animal zoo themed dating sim called Sweetheart Safari, where you, uh, it's like a comedy dating sim where you go on sweet, cute dates with animals. And I just had the idea how much and, fish and, dating are we going to get in this show? <laughs> there was no fish dating, but there was a dolphin you could date. The dolphin cosplay uh, was the thing. That was their quirk. They were embarrassed about cosplaying. You get it out of them. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it was something where, again, it really it, it was also a switcheroo jam, I think is the term, where it's like the artists would do programming and the programmers would do art. And then they would be like, oh, I'm teaching you, you know, how to do my part of it so everybody was already out of their wheelhouse but situations like that it's just um for someone like me who's had no formal you know game development experience and has just kind of learned by doing i mean i have, obviously have experience reviewing vacuums that's my new dating sim a new vacuum dating simulator um and and all my other areas of expertise right have not actually touched any programming so that's really a way for someone who is you know interested in games doesn't have the the uh programming the technical chops to really i mean just dive in and, and what's the harm right oh you don't even have to finish the game jam right you don't have to finish the game um so to get in there it, it really helped me kind of define what i really like like with that business i mentioned i i don't want to do this business i want to make games and then i determined oh i don't want to program games or i don't want to be like a level designer i want to work on these things in games and more narrative focused stuff and and eventually you know i did another game jam for pixel puzzle makeout league which turned into the full right. game so that's the jam that stuck you spent you you do jammed uh that that ended up being the jam that blossomed into a three and a half year project so give, give us the pitch what is pixel puzzle makeout league yeah, that's the game that made me want to start being a puzzle designer, which I, again, I never thought I would do, but it is a, um, uh, it, it, so the game features pixel puzzles, which we call for legally distinct reasons, but um, it was most made famous by um, Jupiter Corporation and HAL Laboratory, uh, Nintendo owned companies, and they called it Picross, which is uh, an abri uh, a portmanteau of picture crossword. And they're called uh, nonograms, if, if you're a little stuffier, uh, griddlers, if you uh, have read a physical newspaper in the past. Is that five not years. exactly Riddler. what they sell at McDonald's for breakfast? Yeah. Was gonna... <laughs> Griddler, yeah. It, it, so, someone, uh, someone on Twitter made this thing called the, the Picross alignment chart, where it's like neutral good, neutral evil. And it has all these names for, for Picross. Um, it's, it's, it's bizarre. There's so many names for them, but yeah, I'm just going to call them Picross. Just uh, Nintendo, you know, don't tell on me. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's, it's, um, it's this game where uh, you are solving puzzles that are pixel art. You get this blank grid and you're kind of Sudoku style, like figuring out on the grid where to fill in um, these squares determined by these hint numbers and it creates pixel art at the end. So, you know, uh, it reveals like a picture of a hamburger. Um, and so I thought, okay, yeah, that would be great to, I've always wanted to make a game like this with a story behind it because the answers are already art. So it's already themed around a story. And I thought, well, what if it was like a, a, a you know, visual novel type story. And then I thought I'd always wanted to make a dating sim for fun. So I thought, well, I made it a dating sim. And then I thought, well, why would there be all these Picross puzzles in this game? What's the narrative reason? Uh, what if you just had a Picross themed superhero uh, named Pixel Girl because she's so obsessed with these puzzle types that she sees her life's problems as puzzles that she works with the player to solve. And then, well, if she's a superhero, there must be other superheroes. And so that turned into being able to date a crossword themed superhero, a Sudoku themed superhero, a chess puzzle themed superhero, and then a giant anthropomorphic uh, jigsaw puzzle piece who you can uh, go on dates with. Um, it, it's a it's a great example of. Um, I'm not sure if people believed in me or thought it was a good idea, but no one told me to stop. And three and a half years later, we uh, we released. So, so that's the that's the pitch for the game. It's uh, puzzles, dating, superheroes, and a lot more. <laughs> Over three and a half years, also. <laughs> that's astonishing. I've 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 started it and I'm enjoying it. Um, and there's something about dating, as a game developer, dating a personification of a game. It feels a bit too much like I've gone in, I've I've done it now. I'm emotionally involved <laughs> with my work. I mean, I am, but um, it's 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 it's, it's interesting. Deep. I I, I think yeah. um, 
I, I really like a lot of uh, Japanese games. You know, JRPGs are interesting to me, and there's something about some of those games. I mean, people like kind of joke on it, but uh, a lot of those games they have this very uh, metaphorical, but it's also act the actual. Is like I, I, I am a, I'm a metaphor for this game type, but I'm also literally like a walking game like i'm a walking puzzle piece you know and yeah. so it's that riding that line is is especially in a, in, in in media in, in you know in, in something that's written is, is fictional uh, is really fascinating to me i i just i like that idea a lot yeah yeah, awesome. yeah and uh so you you've talked you know a bit about people that you've worked with in the community and uh, i think you mentioned this name earlier as well you worked with uh neil and skymax games uh to, to publish this so how, how did that end up happening yeah, I've known Neil for a couple years. Um, Neil, Neil and I uh, at at PAX East, I think 2016. I was working on my previous game, and Neil was showing off uh, his game Bacon Man at PAX, and um, we just started uh, bullying each other uh, on Twitter. Like our company accounts were just being really mean to each other, like in, in a funny way. But um, I, I was, uh, like I said, I was modding, um, modding the game on the show floor, so the characters would start talking about. How, how they didn't like Bacon Man, and, and we were just like <laughs> getting a button from our boots and throwing it in the trash and taking a picture of I've it. I've never seen that level of shit talk. You <laughs> altered your game to talk shit to the game next to you at a show. We we went in, we were, we were, it was just, it was, it was fun, but, uh, but it was, it was harsh. But, um, we, we just became, we, I mean, we'd always kind of, again, with the Boston, you know, game dev scene and New England game dev scene, you kind of, I recognize you, right? You kind of recognize everyone, but but when you actually then get to talk to people, then it seems like everybody becomes friends. It's just, you have not had that moment yet. So when Neil and I had that moment, we became pretty good friends. And um, it eventually turned out where, you know, I think he realized we were doing this game jam, but we were pretty serious about putting it out, you know, and, and even from the beginning, I was like, this is a proof of concept. I've got a full idea. If the game jam works, let's do it. And he saw that, and then uh, he wanted to work with us. He wanted a startup publishing division, um, and he ended up publishing both uh, a port of our, our previous game, Thief Town, um, on Switch. And then, I mean, we were pretty much the, 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 the bulk of their big publishing operations because we were like, we have a port. We have a crazy game that could blow up. Like, let's just do it. And uh, Neil is very much into trying um, weird ideas, I think. Um, He's, he, he, he recognizes uh, wild, weird, unique narrative ideas. And uh, boy, howdy, I got a sack full of them. So, so yeah, speak, speaking of that, and you brought up Thief Town, um, you did a uh, live action trailer for that. Uh, what, 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 what drew you to live action and what, uh, how did that change your life? Yeah, before I uh, before I wanted to work in games, I really wanted to be a filmmaker. I'm sure no game developers ever said that before. <laughs> um, no, I just think I'm, I'm an entertainer. I, I love making stuff. So being able to make films was kind of like my first idea because I, I guess I could visualize, right? With game development, like, I don't know how to do it. I can see the ending, but I don't know the process. Yeah. With filmmaking, it always kind of made sense to me. And I love making dumb videos with friends in high school. Uh, and so I was at Emerson College um, studying marketing, but then, you know, not going to parties. I was with uh, the film kids every weekend making movies with them, right? And people were like, why are you, you're not in the program. Why are, why are you you're not in the film program? Why are you here? I'm like, I just want to hang out on set. Let's make something. So, cool. so you got into the Northeastern yearbook f uh, for hanging out at the game club, uh, but you were also spending your time with a completely different subject major too. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I went to a liberal arts school and, and it's one of those things where if you really want to get anything done, you have to do it on your own damn time is what I is what I realized. So um, I got the most out of it, I nice. think, for, for the tuition. Um, so so, yeah, I, I, I was around film people. I had a lot of film friends. They like games, too. And I was like, well, look, like this game is interesting and it's good however thief town is a single screen multiplayer game which is kind of hard to convey unless you're actually playing it because the game it's a stealth game where everybody when the game starts looks exactly the same and you have to find out where you are in the crowd because there's all these uh, npcs walking around that look just like you so you have to figure out where you are and then find out which of the other npcs are acting weird that are actually the other players and then you stab them in the back um, so it is so hard to just show gameplay of that because it's a single screen and it's like, there's no <laughs> indication of what's happening. So I decided to be inspired by, um, those absolutely insane eighties Zelda commercials. You know, the, the Zelda commercial where the kid raps 
and and it's like I wanted to to catch that unbridled insanity, and so it turned into yeah this live action commercial, um, where like yeah they're talking about like thieves stabbing each other, and then the thieves are real and and they scream. So that's that's me in the commercial with the artist who actually ended up working. He's actually pretty big at Jackbox right now. <laughs> Humble origins. I hope he, he's not mad that I, I I brought that up, but um. We just decided to make it as funny as possible and try to get enough attention. And and I think that's really the only thing I've done in my King Dev career that's like caught on that people have been like, oh my God, because people still bring that up. Um, but it, it works because there's the other thing too is is some people also I've seen some games do live action commercials and you gotta sell it. You gotta go all in. You can't just do like a half in, haha funny. You have to like really like punch through someone's head and pull their brain out like you have to do something insane that no one's seen before so i think that's why it, it connected with people but um i don't know and, i just wanted to cram filmmaking into this game right <laughs> and speaking of doing something insane that no one's ever seen before uh i got a, a question for you uh wario's woods hmm yeah uh, <laughs> my question is hmm <laughs> wario's woods is that i gotta check the i'm not sure if this is gonna play during the, the twitch channel because i'm just in the i'm just looking at the video call right now but um that was another part of it we filmed that right after the thief town commercial it oh is i can see that starting now there our audience is oh, getting, getting, getting get that now. the opening of this video is actually so so we ended up the filmmaker on this that did the thief town commercial with me we worked on pml together uh pixels makeup league together and that's me as toad uh, God, I used to be so fit back then. Um, <laughs> but this was a, a, so Wario's Woods is like a nin, original Nintendo puzzle game where it's a, it's a fascinating idea for a puzzle game. You are in like a tree and Wario is dropping stuff on you and you're towed. And it's like, you know, Poyo Poyo or Tetris, you're trying to clear lines, but you're actually a character in the puzzle where stuff is falling on you. So you have to like pick up stuff and like maneuver around. So it's a little bit of a platformer puzzle game. And um, I, again, I was trying to work on video game stuff. I didn't know if I wanted to make films. I, w I just wanted to take this, the most obscure Nintendo game that no one ever thinks about ever and then make it into a horror movie because I thought that'd be really funny. And also I just wanted to scream like Toad. Uh, so that's, that's that. But again, I, you know, me and this, uh, this filmmaker, um, Amos, good friend of mine, we've been together doing Wario's Woods, um, the Thief Town commercial, and then he helped film, uh, live action stuff for Pixel Puzzle Makeout League. So we have been doing this sort of thing for like eight years now. So, um, I just wow. keep serving up the projects and, uh, people in my life, I just open it up. And, and that's what I love about game game development too, and being like a, a director of like a team is like, let me just get as many people as I know who can do something. I will find a way to fit that in. Like, let's get it in there. So, do you think you've learned a lot about? Uh, you talked about finding out. You know, you didn't want to do this part of that part. Of it. Do you, do you have like a, 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 a uh, can you articulate? And I'm asking because I always find, still find it hard for myself. Articulate like what is my spot in games? What is this? This is where I want to be. This is where I'm effective. Or maybe I'm ineffective, but it's where I want to be. Yeah, I think I think that's why I love bigger teams. You know, there's always the the talk of like the solo indie developers doing everything. My thing is, I'm gonna surround myself with as many people who are willing to jump in on this project, and then the gaps will reveal themselves, right? And then that's where I will go in and and, and learn. Um, for example, something like map design. We were doing like maps and stuff, and and my uh, programmer on the project and our pixel artist were like working on the maps and then i filled in like how do i do pathing how do i figure out this part you know because because you're working on other stuff so yeah it, it really is just i think it's going to matter project to project as well you know and you always want to be learning something new so at least for a new project i'm looking forward to maybe having a smaller team and then finding out other things that okay if you're not actively doing who's actively doing this I'll have to jump in and puzzle design. Like I said, big thing where I was like, I never thought it'd be a puzzle designer. And yet I ended up making like 150, 200 puzzles for this puzzle game with another designer, of course, not all on my own, but working, I, I'm a big, I, I love working with with teams. They really can help you again. What is what is yourself not, you know, if you don't have someone else to reflect on. So wow. um, I understand it doesn't work Very for everyone, deep. but I, I, I just love uh, having a lot of people. Oh, beautiful. Wow. And, and on that incredibly uh, profound and deep note, uh, last and most important question, uh, how can people follow your work or connect with you on this, the World Wide Web? 
Yes, uh, everybody, everybody, get out your digital surfboards and hop onto the, grab onto the back of a truck going down the information superhighway. I, I'll continue. No, totally <laughs> nautical, dude. Totally yeah, it's nautical. nautical. I, that's the thing. I'm supposed to be quiet during the opening of the show, and I'm like, all I want to do is talk about nautical. Like, let's, <laughs> let's get this catching on. Um, you can follow me at uh, Beautiful James. So Beautiful Joe, but but James. Um, my company right now is called Rude Ghost. It's really annoying. Uh, our company is called Rude Ghost. Some guy in like 2009, as it always goes, has at Rude Ghost. So I had to take at Rude Ghost Games. We're just Rude Ghost, but you can follow us at Rude Ghost Games. Come on, Brian. Brian was a locked account. Give it up. I'll pay you a hundred bucks. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, you can find uh, Pixel Puzzle Makeout League is our latest game. Uh, I guess, well, Rude Ghost's first original game. You can find it at... Um, Picross.love is the domain. So P I C R O S S dot L O V E. It's available on Nintendo Switch and uh, Windows operating system and the Macintosh OS. Um, check it out there and uh, send some send some bucks my way so we can get working on <laughs> game two. And I saw you joined the uh, uh, game dev Slack. Uh, I did. Welcome I did. to Slack. Um, uh, so, uh, people can jump on your train from there and you can fill in their gaps. This is how it works, right? Yeah, that's, that's the lingo. That's the ridge. <laughs> that's me and my, my day job. I'm just like a gap filling kind of person. I'm like the IT guy at my company basically now at my day job. It's really strange, but you know, you learn a lot when people need you to do something, when no one can do something, you, you learn a lot by pitching in. So, um, well, we want to we wanna open this up to more people because it's just about time for the happy hour portion of the bit show. Uh, so we're going to be looking the Slack we're just talking about, find the link. Join us um, in uh, this Zoom call where we will, um, I think James may even have a thing or more uh, to going on to talk about, uh, you know, and we can just get cozy and uh, live it up in our happy hour here for a bit. So. Thank you so much for joining us for this show. This has been fantastic. Yes, thank you so much. You've been a great guest. And you've been a great audience. Audience. That's right. right. The camera. There it is. <laughs> That's right, audience. Let's get one more round of applause for our guest here. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Amazing. Rude Ghost has no arms, so I'll do like a... <laughs> <laughs> little feet there. Oh, the little feet. Oh, I love that. Got little feet. Uh, do ghosts have feet? Uh, this Actually, this in Japanese has... culture, they don't. <laughs> Wait, really? Check, oh. You can check if someone's a ghost or not by looking to see if they have feet. And if they don't, then they're not a ghost. I mean, if they don't, they are the, a ghost. Ugh. Happy hour <laughs> kickoff talk. Let's get into ghost. Let's feet. talk about ghosts. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. That's going to do it for the bit show tonight. You can join us next week where we're going to have Tony and Abby Arias, who make uh, Scarlet Hollow, which looks really cool. Uh, and I don't know them, so it'll be a great opportunity to get to know some other cool local devs uh, doing work around here. Uh, obviously, yes, going to post the Zoom link for the happy hour in the Slack channel in just a second. That'll be in the events channel, and I'll again post a link to the Slack to the Twitch chat. Uh, what else is going on? That's it. Right? I don't have anything else. I feel like I, feel like I, have, I feel like I have one other thing I'm supposed to say right now, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, you can follow Boston Indies on Twitter, at Boston Indies, uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash Boston Indies. Like, and, comment, uh, and subscribe. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, follow follow the Twitch channel if you want to get notifications about when we're going live, because we have been going on at kind of random times between like 7.05 and 7.30. Uh yeah. I just followed. I forgot to follow because I just <laughs> see the Twitter notifications, but uh, I have... Am I not following? <laughs> That's my problem. I keep not following Twitch streamers because I just see them on Twitter, but I got, got the following right now. Very disappointing. Uh, all right. And yeah, that's, uh, that's going to do it for our show. We'll see you next week or in a minute at the happy hour. Thanks for tuning in and have a good night. And don't drink uh, glow uh, sticks, uh, everybody. Uh, 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 let's go! Yeah, I have.